That's a great point, David, but college basketball isn't the NBA. In college basketball, the greatest thing about the entire sport itself is parody and chaos. That's why March Madness is called March Madness, because it's mad and crazy. If you get rid of conference tournaments, you're getting rid of a bunch of chaotic, crazy moments. Look at UConn, 2011. Kemba Walker and the UConn Huskies are 99 in conference going into conference play, going into the end of conference play, the Big East tournament. And they're not going to make the tournament if they don't make a run. Kemba Walker comes in there, averages 23 points a game throughout the tournament. They go on a chaotic run full of crazy momentum and crazy plays and crazy moments, including an incredible buzzer beater against Pitt. And then they go on to win the NCAA tournament, proving that they were the best team in that tournament. If you get rid of the conference tournaments, you don't have moments like that. You don't have chaos like that. And where's the fun in that? The NBA is a different product. I understand that concept, but if you look at that Milwaukee team, it did take them a few wins to get into that conference tournament championship game. They did have to win three games in a row, proving that if they're put in a tournament setting like the NCAA tournament, they certainly have the opportunity and the chance to potentially make a run and cause that chaos. So if I agree with some of what you're saying, but another facet of conference tournaments that don't get mentioned enough is the exposure of all of it. You're looking at a team like Milwaukee, for example, that probably never played a televised game, a nationally televised game before that conference tournament championship. These games are on ESPN, and they're averaging each game in the tournament, not just championships, are averaging at least 700,000 viewers across the country. You're getting kids that never would be on TV, never being in a nationally televised game, getting these crazy cool experiences, and why would you want to take those away from these scholarship athletes who don't get much else? I mean, I would have to agree 100% with you. It's just kind of absurd if you're going to plop 10 teams that all play in the Midwest in the middle of the East Coast and say, oh, fans, show up, please, I beg you. That's kind of absurd if you think about it. All the fans are centrally located around the locations of these teams, and you're trying to get them all to fly to a separate arena. I get the concept of trying to expand to the East Coast. I get all of that, but that's not the way to do it. I think it's perfect. I love the moments it creates. I love the exposure it gives to the athletes. And I love the entire experience of it all. It's March Madness. And why would you mess with something that's been so successful, not only for the programs, not only for the players, but for the TV networks and for everybody around it? March Madness is beautiful. Why change it? But what you do with that is you eliminate a team that was close to the bubble, like, for example, last year, Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Syracuse would not have made the tournament under your new rules. Syracuse, one, is a huge market, huge revenue, revenue possibilities rather than any mid-major school, and they made it to the Final Four. So do you really want to get rid of those Power Five conference teams, which are most likely going to be more talented and create a better product in March? 